Hey there YouTubers, thanks for tuning back in. It's Dan Strong with Excel VBA is Fun. Today we have a uh, by request uh, video on user forms. Uh, what this person asked me to do is to make a list and uh, they asked me to how do you fill a combo box on a user form? Because we reviewed it on a worksheet um, using an ActiveX uh, uh, combo box, which is a drop down box, but not in a user form. So very quickly, we'll just put a few things in our list. We're going to call uh, butter, chocolate, popcorn, and of course, Skittles. Okay, that's all we need. We'll make that bold. We've got our list, right? Let's make a, we could make a dynamic range, but in this case we'll just uh, call it <clears throat> foods and hit enter. So now we have a range called foods. You know how to do that, I'm sure. So there's our list, foods. Hit Alt F11. Alt F11 gets you in the Visual Basic Editor, and we're going to click on a user form that we want. Here's our basic user form, and on the toolbox, we're going to use a combo box. We will give it a label. We will say uh, foods, okay? And we will double click on the lower right hand corner to make that scooch that up a little bit. There's our combo box. If you'll hit F4, you'll notice that the properties window comes up. So when you click on something, you can name it. I'm going to name this CMB for combo box. And then type in the word food. That helps me reference that item. So there's two ways to fill this combo box. There's using the dot add item. So whenever you want to add something specifically but not everything in that list you can use the dot add item in your code and it's really easy and I'll show you um, the easiest way, let's do the easiest way first in this you click on the thing that you want to edit the properties to remember if you close that by accident you just hit F4 Oops, hit F4 and there's your window there for your properties we're going to go to the list uh, no, not list fill range, that's on a worksheet. In this we use a row source, but it's the exact same thing as the list fill range. And you could say sheet one exclamation point uh, A2 through A5, but we gave it a nice name. We called it, what was it, foods? I'm going to hit enter and see if that worked. Let's just click here. Okay, so it worked. Alright, so uh, that's the easy way, but when I hit F5 or if I click the run thing, here's our user form, right? Uh, all I can do is have everything that's in the list. What if I wanted a custom list that maybe if I had two or three or a hundred columns that only the ones that were from Toronto or Ontario or whatever <coughs> would list the thing in column A, like if butter and popcorn were the only ones that were uh, Ontario, let's say, then those are the only ones that we wanted to appear in this list at this moment. Well, then you can't exactly just do a named range and slap it on there. So the other way you want to do is a more custom thing. And what we're going to, I'm going to trim this up a little bit, what we're going to show you now is what you can do is, um, in this case, we'll make this filter go down um, whenever the user form is opened whenever you open it for however you do that you could make it on a click event when you click a button when you when um, when you close something when you select something on a different button or or when you type something in a in a text box the sky's the limit you just add the code to tell this routine to run in this case, I'm going to make it on the user form initialize. So I'll double click on the, anywhere on the background here. I don't want a user form click event. Uh, so you go down to user form, right? You do an initialize. That's when the user form opens up. What do you want it to do? When it opens up, I want it to fill this list. Now, what are the parameters that we want? Because obviously, we are not uh, wanting everything in the list. How about we customize it at first? So here's the part about uh, fill the combo box. Just making a note to myself. We're going to say, how about we just only want butter and popcorn? Okay, sounds delicious, right? Um, so if, uh, let's see, let's do for each cell in, what was the range called? Food? Or foods, perhaps. 
for each cell in a range called foods. And then of course at the end we have to have the next cell or the next whatever variable we say. You don't have to put cell, you could for each uh, blah and you have to say the next blah or you could put anything you want there. It's just a unit of skipping through all the cells in that range. So um, if blah, if the current cell that we're selected on it equals um, butter, end quote, or blah equals uh, popcorn, then hit enter and hit tab. Well, if it's butter or popcorn, what do we want to do? We want to say, um, we can say user form one, which is the name of this user form, dot add item. Or since we're in within the user forms code, we could say me dot add item. Well, maybe we're not. Are we not in the user form? Uh, let's see. User form initialize. Let's see. Me dot. Oh, me dot cmb. Okay, the user forms dot combo box named cmb food dot add item. And when I hit space, it'll automatically fill and create a space bar and then it'll allow me to use the dot add item which is so easy to use you just reference whatever you want dot add item and the item that I want to add is whatever our current cell is so it's taken on the value of blah or the, the variable will take on whatever value is the one that we want so we're adding whatever blah is at the current moment and of course do an end if um, so let's see what that looks like I'll hit F8 we're initializing. So for each blah in the range called foods, the first one is called butter. It's the first cell in the range. Uh, if blah equals butter or blah equals popcorn, well, that's correct. So we're going to use the dot add item of currently blah equals butter. So we're adding that item. Oh, permission denied. Why? Well, I'll tell you. Let's uh, let's go into the user form here. You're going to get this. If you already gave it a row source, if you gave it a name, uh, then it's saying, well, you can't distinct, you can't specify certain ones if you want the whole range. So let's delete that part out, uh, just backspace or something. So now it should be fine. So dot add item butter. Okay, so now we've added that to the list, which is fine. And then the second one was chocolate, so it it skipped over that. Now is this equal to butter or popcorn? Yes. So it's going to add the item popcorn. And finally, is it equal to butter or popcorn? No, it's Skittles, so it's going to skip over that. Next blah, and then there's no more code, so it goes ahead and initializes your user form. So when you look at here, it only has the ones that you filtered down. Now, you don't have to do that by exact words. You could have other columns. Let's just say that we had a column called number. And uh, if you, I don't know, if you, or if you had trues and falses, for example, and you wanted to make it a little more dynamic, let's add some more things here. No, no, that's fine. So if you want to say if if the thing in column B or if the thing dot offset to the right is is true, then add this. We'll show you how to do that really quick. Might as well. If you're done listening to my voice, you can always <laughs> pause it, but. For those who want to learn, I'm just going to keep rambling because it's good stuff, I think. So I'm going to double click here. Let's just modify that. We don't want to say butter. We don't care about butter or popcorn. We want to make it dynamic based on if this is true or false, or if this is, you know, one or zero, or if it's greater than one, uh, or, you know, you know, whatever, greater than 30 or l less than or equal to 29, whatever, okay? You can customize the stuff just in the way you've seen here. But in this case, we'll say if it's true, do this. If it's uh, false, then don't add it. Okay? So let's see. If blah dot offset. Oh, really? You can do that? Yes. So if the current cell dot offset, and we want to offset it, um, first of all, uh, how many rows down or up do we want to go? We don't want to go any. We want to stay on the current row, but we want to zoom over. Uh, so zero rows down or up 
comma, how many columns do we want to offset? Well, we just want to jump one to the right. If it was to the left, well, we couldn't, but uh, one to the left would be negative one, and one to the right is one, one column. So if blah dot offset zero rows and one column over to the right, if that cell equals true, then, and is that cell equal to true? It sure is. So let's take a look at our code. I'm going to hit F8 to debug one line at a time. For each blah in the range, okay. So blah is now butter. So if blah dot offset zero rows down or up and one over to the right is true, then we will add the item which is blah. Now could we add the item that's blah dot offset blah 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 blah? Yes, you could. You just have to say blah dot offset blah, but we don't want to see true and false and true and false. You might, whatever, you do what you want. I'm gonna hit a fate. Yeah, the next one is that one equal to true? No, it says false right there. See, so it skips that one, skips the next one, it's false, and the last one is true. Bam! Check that crap out, huh? Let's see. So now we have butter and skittles because this one was true and this one was true. So. Um, that's how to two ways to dynamically update it. Remember, when you have a combo box on a worksheet like this, you right click on it and go to properties, right? So in the properties window, if in a worksheet you have the list fill range, that's where you put the word foods, okay? And and you can use the dot add item to customize the stuff in a worksheet but I like user forms but whatever hit enter and you put the range in there and you take it off a of design mode and you have that list that just enter that's in your combo box butter popcorn just hit the first letter skittles so that's how to do that um, remember uh, design mode right click on a worksheet uh, combo box and remember the difference is it is called list fill range where you put the actual range but on a user form hit alt f11 here in a user form it is not called list fill range you hit f4 to get your properties it's not called list fill range it's called row source that's where you can type in foods but you cannot have a row source or a list fill range or whatever if you're trying to use the dot add item to add specific items that you're trying to filter out you just can't have both you can't have be the whole thing and then be only this and this it's going to be one or the other and excel will give you a little error and get mad at you if you have both so that's why you're getting an error probably if you have any questions don't hesitate to leave a comment and i will get back with you as soon as i can and who knows somebody else from the youtube excel nerd community will probably help you out too because we like to help each other so thanks for watching this uh, this workbook is going to be available in our dropbox share link it's going to be called combo boxes in user forms and worksheets thanks for watching and god bless Thank you.